Hello there, and thank you for joining me for another day of 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we implement something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. My name is Anais, and today we are going to be looking at Crossplane. What is Crossplane? When would we use it? Why would we want to use it? How do we use it? Now, there are several other videos, also some linked below, that show you exactly how to set it up, how to use the documentation. You can also dive right into the documentation, and I also have documented the entire setup process on my public Notion page. So since there's everything like the detailed step by step, I thought I'm going to take this time to mainly show you the, the practical overview of how you would set everything up versus setting everything actually up, if that makes sense. Let's dive into the drawing board. So here, I'm just going to show you, highlight what we're going to do. We have two distinctions in my case. You don't have to make this distinction. I'm going to make this distinction. We have a local, local environment and local interactions, and we have remote environment and remote interactions, okay? So we have here one cluster, one Kubernetes cluster that could be Minikube, Cube, or Docker Desktop, or Microcades, any cluster that you can access locally, okay? So on that cluster, we want to install, it could also be a cluster that's on a cloud. It could be a Google Cloud cluster, it could be an Azure cluster, it could be an AWS cluster, any cluster that you have access to through your kubectl command line, okay? That's the important part. You want to have kubectl, then you also want to have Helm installed, in my case, or like to follow the documentation on my public Notion page, you want to have Helm installed, and there was one other thing. So next, we're going to install Crossplane. Crossplane on that cluster, yeah? And once we have it installed, it basically installs several Kubernetes resources on our cluster. And then we can have a look at those resources and make sure they are properly installed and up and running. And once we have those, we want to give it access to, in my case, I'm going to use Azure. I think it's pronounced Azure. Azure. <laughs> and we want to give it access to our Azure account. So we do like ASAT login and then we want to provide it, we want to provide our local cluster, in this case that we're using with Crossplane, with some information on our Azure account, such as our Azure ID and some other information. Now, we're going to set up all those information and they are detailed in the Crossplane docs on how you can set those up. And then once we have all these information, what we're going to do next is we are going to create a Kubernetes secret, okay? A kubectl secret. And that secret is then, that secret is then packed into YAML files, okay? So lastly, once we have that secret, once we have given our local cluster with Crossplane information on our Azure account, and on our Azure account, there's nothing, there's no cluster, nothing yet, okay? There's, it's completely empty, yeah? So once we have all of that, we're going to locally, in that case, we can do it locally, we're going to set up our YAML, file and that YAML file is basically what well, communicates with Crossplane and tells Crossplane what resource it's supposed to set up on the connected cluster, like in our case on our Azure cluster. So we're going to tell Crossplane, hey, we want you to set up, first of all, a resource group. Source group. And then second of all, it should set up our cluster. Now, I'm going to do all of that in a second on like a basic Azure account. So you can try it out by yourself with a local cluster and then you can spin up a remote cluster. You could also use um, something like Google Cloud. You could use AWS or any other provider as well to, to do this remote part. You could also, I think you could also do it on another, like spin up another cluster such as Kind locally. I haven't tried it yet though. So I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, so this is what we're going to do. And then once you have that set up, you can then access the uh, cube config locally. Like once you have an, your Azure cluster set up, you can access, you can provide cube cuddle with access to that cluster. And then you can install other applications on that cluster. Why are we 
taking this trouble on us. Why are we doing that? We can also use the Azure command client uh, directly to set up our cluster, right? We could do that as well. However, we don't want to do it in this case because that's an imperative way of creating resources. If we say Azure and then create cluster, I don't know the exact um, command, we are telling our, we're telling cube, like our, well, our resources to set up a cluster. We're telling it set up this cluster with these and these and these parameters, right? With these and these uh, variables, uh, so to say, with these kind of resources and so on. And then Azure is going to go ahead and set up that cluster. Now it's really it's a reactive way of of creating resources. It's like do this, it's going to go ahead and do that. It's like do this, go ahead and do that. And that's not a declarative way of how we want to manage actually our resources. What we want to do instead is say here is what our cluster is going to look like. Can you see this? Okay, this is our oh, cluster <laughs> YAML. And this tells it we want this, 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 this on our cluster. That's how our cluster is supposed to look like. And then we want to take this YAML and we want to give it, in this case, we're giving it to Crossplane, which is running on our local cluster. And that is really the local cluster is just needed for Crossplane to exist, okay? It's just an abstraction, so to say, to, for us to be interacting with Crossplane, for Crossplane to have the resource information to then go ahead and set up our uh, Azure cluster in that case. So in this case, we have our YAML file and that's the declarative way of formulating resources. We have our YAML file and we go ahead and say, set up this environment, set up this cluster. So when we want to make changes, when you want to make updates to this YAML, create a new YAML with um, YAML2 for our cluster, we can then take this new YAML as well and provide it to Crossplane to set up our cluster. So this is the declarative way of formulating our resource and that's what we want. So Crossplane provides us with an option to do that. It provides us with an option to not have to go to the Azure or to the Google Cloud, Google, <laughs> or to the AWS um, interface to the UI and having to modify our resources there. Because if we consistently modify our resources directly through the UI, it's going to get quite messy, right? You might set up some resource and you're like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and set up your resources. And I'm going to be like, uh, how did you set up your resources? I have no idea how you did that. Like, which buttons do I have to press? And then you have to tell me what buttons I have to press. So let's say a bunch of users or different, different people have to set up their cluster and you all want them to set up the same cluster on their Azure or Google account or whatever, right? So in that case, uh, you would have to either tell them with screenshots step by step, press these buttons, press this button and so on to set up their cluster, the imperative way of formulating resources, of creating resources. Or you could go ahead and be like, hey, you install this, this, this as like cross plane on your local cluster. In that case, you run these and these commands and then you can install your resources through that, through this YAML file. You take the YAML file and you install your cluster and it's always going to be the same cluster that's going to be created because it's defined within the YAML. The YAML doesn't change if we don't change it, right? So this is a much more proactive way of defining our resources. So if you go to the public Notion page that I have linked below, you can find all of my notes for the previous days, including for today, Crossplane, and it's walking you step by step through how I set everything up. It also details further benefits that I more or less outlined <laughs> uh, in the previous minutes. <laughs> and it provides you with an installation guide and what you need to have set up and how you can set it up for Azure in that case and so on. Now, I have already done everything up to this point, up to provisioning my infrastructure. So I'm going to just walk you through the different steps that I needed to get there. So first of all, you have to have your local cluster set up. Now let's take a look at my local cluster that I have. Here's the command line. And I have kubectl config and then current context. I'm currently on my local Docker desktop cluster. And if we go, well, so you have that, okay? Then you have Helm installed. Then you have kubectl installed. So as you can see here, the different options on how these tools are used. Now you're going to go ahead and you, in my case, I selected self-hosted option. So I'm on Linux. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and follow these steps on setting up Crossplane with Helm. So I'm gonna use Helm to install my Crossplane resources. Now, if I'm gonna go ahead and check out the status of these resources, as I'm right now on my local cluster, like just shown on my desktop cluster, we can see here that these are my, this is my Helm chart, Crossplane for, well, the Helm chart for Crossplane, called Crossplane, <laughs> and that is first revision and it's deployed right now. Now I can also go ahead and list all the resources. They have always stored within a crossplane namespace. You want to install within a namespace. It does it here automatically if you it, like if you define a namespace because that allows you to easily delete resources, which you want to do at the end. Now we have kubectl and then all the resources within a crossplane namespace, as you can see. They are right now all running. One had a restart. The others are nicely ready, my replica sets. So this is all, can you see this? always difficult to make you see this. Okay, here, let's do it like that. Okay, as you can see here, all of my resources, they're ready. Now, what we're gonna go ahead now, we have, we want to install Crossplane, the client. And if I, like once I've done that, I can go ahead and say kubectl Crossplane and then help. And it's providing me with different options of how Crossplane is gonna be used. So I have that. And now here comes the tricky part. You have to select a provider. And in this case, it has four different providers defined on basically the different steps that you need to do to use those. So the thing is, if you're using Azure, I'm not too sure about the other two, or three, <laughs> um, you have to be able, you have to be, have at least the owner role on your cluster. You have to be able to create new, um, well, roles in this case, I believe. Yeah, create service principle with owner role. So if you're not able to create new roles, you can't do that. So that's why, for instance, I thought, okay, I'm gonna just try it out if it works on the trial version with limited resources, what can I do with the least, basically? So you go through these steps, first this command, then this one, and then you define this and this and jup. And then you should have at the end, is it this one? Yes. Um, so you want to have at the end, you have like a credentials file. Now I'm not going to look at that because I don't want to show you my credentials to my Azure <laughs> account. And here I'm also going to link this repository that I have set up. So I have here a git ignore file that basically has, defines what is not supposed to be put to git, right? Which is in this case, the credentials file. I don't want anybody to see that, right? So we want to close that. So I'm not actually showing you that in any case. And then since we have the file, we want to create our secret. Now, once we have the secret, we can then create a provider with that secret to our Azure cross plane. Now this is, um, there's a different version now. There's a version beta three, I think, alpha three, version one alpha three or something. That is the latest. So we next provide this config. Now you can either create this config and then say kubectl apply in that file. It's detailed in the Notion page again. <laughs> and, or you can just use the kubectl command here and apply that provider. Now that should all work. Um, yeah, you should have this afterwards. So <laughs> once we have all of this, yeah, we want to go ahead and we want to provision our infrastructure. Now, here, if you go to infrastructure provision on the documentation, it doesn't create just like a class that creates a PostgreSQL database. We don't want that. We want to just have a cluster where we can install some new resources, let's say. So we're gonna go ahead and here we're gonna, well, let me cd into that directory and then cross plane. So I'm here in that directory that I just showed you and that's over here so let's zoom in on this okay so this is obviously not too interesting that file but this file is going to be interesting so I'm going to try to show that to you properly first we're going to create so as you can see here we are using the API version Azure crossplane.io and then version one alpha three. They also have like documentation, how you can use that 
like the different resource types that you can create and the associated uh, values that you would put into those. Now, we have uh, the resource group that we create called on any resource in this case, location East US. You can also specify another location. And then this, these three lines basically just divide the different YAML resources that we have listed in one file. So we don't have to deploy them separately, but we can just deploy them all at once. And once we have the resource group, and it's the same resource group as down here on any resource, uh, we want to create a cluster with a node pool of two nodes. And it's just going to be a standard node of like the size, <laughs> the VMs that are going to be created for that cluster. This is the Kubernetes version that's going to be created, the location again. And yeah, this is simple resource definition that's going to be used to create our Azure cluster. Now we're going to go ahead and apply this resource. So we're going to go back to our terminal and we can now say kubectl and then uh, apply and the file is going to be aks aks.yaml and we're going to go ahead and set this up. Now this should create a resource group with the name Anais Demo Resource and then <laughs> it should, I should probably have named that the same. And then it will create a cluster called Anais Crossplane Demo Create. Now we can have a look at this being all created. So as you can see, here's my cluster. It is not yet ready. It's probably right now in creation. Now, if we take this, we can say, and we exit this kubectl and then describe. And here we want to describe the cluster to see the previous events. So we will have a list of the different events that happened to that cluster. And we can see at the beginning, it couldn't find the resource group because the resource group that it's needed to create a cluster wasn't created yet. Now, once the resource group was created, it managed to successfully start the creation of the cluster. Now, this cluster is going to get created now. And we can also go ahead and say um, with the Azure command line, uh, what was it? Uh, list, AKS list, I think. So it's right now, as you can see, the provisioning state is creating. So it provides me a nice JSON output. I think that's JSON. <laughs> uh, of how my cluster is being created right now. I can also head over to the, well, to the UI itself. And then I can just hit refresh on my Kubernetes service. And as you can see, here is my cluster and it's right now being created. Now that is as, uh, yeah, this is simply it. Like it doesn't get that much more complicated. What you could do next is you could, uh, instead of directly telling your local cluster, in my case, I'm telling my local cluster, hey, this is the YAML file that I want to use to create the resources, to create the cluster, to create the infrastructure that I need to deploy my application and so on. We could, instead of telling it directly to our local cluster and cross-plane, we could tell it to Argo. We could give it to Argo CD. So Argo CD has a record of like, this is our desired state in Git. And then, oops. <laughs> and then it can go ahead and um, communicate with cross-plane on the cluster. And uh, Crossplane then creating our infrastructure. So in that way would be full GitOps. Now link below, there's a video that does that, that shows how that can be done. Now I hope this was useful in highlighting how you can use Crossplane on your local cluster to deploy, to provision infrastructure on your cloud provider. In that case, Azure, you could also use Google Cloud, you could use AWS or another provider. You could also create your own provider. As mentioned, Crossplane is a custom, Kubernetes custom resource definition. So it's Kubernetes resource in itself. You can modify it, you can create similar Kubernetes resource and so on. <laughs> it's basically a way of deploying your, infra creating your infrastructure and deploying your resources in a declarative format. If you would combine Crossplane in combination with Argo CD, and there's the video link below where that's actually done. You can then define all of your resources, your infrastructure, your applications, anything that you're using with Kubernetes through GitOps, through a declarative, declarative, declarative format of deploying your resources. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I try to make a video this week each day so stay notified for that i hope to see you next time have a lovely day bye bye